And good evening, Cyberspace. Welcome to the Bigfoot News for today's date, March 15th, 2024. I'm your host, your guide, Squatch Detective Steve Coles, along with Mr. Chris Bennett right down there. Hello, Chris. Steve, how you doing, man? I oh. am doing well, sir. How about that neck? Uh, this neck still uh, getting you down? Oh, the neck sucks. Oh, well. Just hang yeah. in there, man. It'll take so, a little yes. time to mend, a little time to heal. <laughs> but uh, we, yeah. got some, we got some rain today. And uh, I was kind of glad of it because I'm still sore. <laughs> I know if any case folks didn't know, they can check it out on the channel. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we have a video release of Chris's little scouting mission up there. And we're asking for your guys' help to see if you guys maybe uh, that have been in the field have noticed what Chris notices in the video. I don't want to elaborate that. I want people to watch the video and check it out. Yeah. Because um, I think that's really important. So people check that video out. And, uh, you know, make sure you give it the, the thumbs up as well. Please. Give me Please. A thumbs up. <laughs> and that reminds me, for all our, our new subscribers here, welcome. We yeah. salute you. Welcome to the family. And we have the world's greatest audience. So we're yeah. glad to uh, have you on board as well. And uh, if you're here for a while, you like what you see, maybe consider joining as a member. A membership is a great way to support this channel. And uh, we're, we're doing a lot of stuff, as you can see. We're, we're pumping out videos and we're pumping out good, honest content. We're not pumping out, you know, squatch bait or anything like that. Right. Um, instead of clickbait, I call it squatch bait. Yeah. You know, uh, let's take this long debunk video. Let's put it out there like it just happened yesterday. We don't do that here. Um, and we, again, our one of our, our, our key lines or keywords is hashtag no scriptozoology. We don't sit there and bring people on with a script uh, that will read you their story or tell you their story with a script. We bring you real witnesses and real people every day. Right. And real research discussion. <laughs> that, that's it. Real research discussions. The people that are actually in the field and, and, and do it. Not just uh, some financial wizard that all of a sudden <laughs> buys a couple of programs and thinks he can enhance everything and then claim it's not AI driven when it's AI driven. Anyway. <laughs> You know, 20 years yeah. ago, uh, tracking through the woods, going up and down the hills and hollows wasn't that bad of a deal. But now, oh boy, it, it's rough. Definitely sucks getting old. <laughs> Definitely sucks getting old, I'll tell you what. But, uh, you know, getting hit by a tractor trailer twice. Uh, yeah. yeah. That'll take it out of you. Yeah. A little bit. Anyway, um, Chris, do you think we should do our roll call? Yeah, I think it's about time for the roll call. Who we got? Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Uh oh. Wait, wait. Esther was a man with a dream in his heart. Just aching to be part of the chat room start. He typed so fast, fingers flying like a dog. But someone else always beat him and tore him apart. Squatch TV was his absolute obsession A form full of believers Full of grand pledges Sit yes. alone, watch it with pure dedication Wester, this one's for you But getting in that chat room was his true aspiration Oh, oh, Lester finally made it in He's the chat room champion. It's his ultimate win. Oh, oh, the miracle that he performed. Unlocking the chat room, his dream finally formed. And first in the chat today is Lester Taylor, who finally made it. Lester, congratulations, sir. We salute you. Next in is our good friend Don Gumbau Jr. Don. Uh, Relic Hominin. He'll be checking the show out tomorrow. Sharon, hello. Oh, yeah. 
Walter hey. Kroll. Hello. Walter. Elton, aka Faster Man. Good to see Faster you. Man. Mitch Hargrove, good to see you, sir. Mitch? Tennessee Cherokee. Uh, hello, hello. Smedley sure? Duright, good to see you, sir. Smedley, welcome. Uh, he said, Thinker Thunker, tonight's guest. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Angel Nolan, good to see you. Martin Thank Still, you. Tom in Academia, good to see you as well. Jay Fritz, hello, my friend. Thank you for Thank all you do around here. Kevin Harder, Professor, how are you, sir? Oh, and uh, uh, a special announcement, Brian Chewy, go hiking, member for nine months. Again, Brian, Brian. Nolan, thank you for all you do. We appreciate you, buddy. Little Kilroy, still here, damn it. Little <laughs> Kilroy. Okay. Jeff D. Smith. Hello, Jeff D. Good to see you as well. Thank you for all you do. Arthur Watch. Hello. B. Lynn. Not only a member, but also a moderator. That's why she's got a little wrench next to her name. And uh, Walter Kroll. Hey, Jeff sure. Yellick is in the house. Good to see you, Jeff. Jeff, welcome. Uh, Pete H. Uh, again, another longtime Pete. member. Hello, Pete. Yeah. We appreciate um, you, man. That's it. And uh, that looks like it for right now. Oh, man. But, uh, right. Well, while they even said Lester is number one. Yes. we have, and Lester deserves the recognition. I mean, uh, you know, you, you got to love it when a plan comes together. He was, he was steadfast and then dedicated. So, uh, Lester, for the last month, has wanted to get in so badly to be the first one in. It's kind of like little game our, our chat room gaggle plays and um finally he made it in so i saw that and immediately i went over to some of my programming and said i gotta get a song put together for this so oh, excuse me. Night. oh that was good that uh oh that was I'm very gonna this by the <laughs> you know, it was a very heartwarming song for lester and yes, in dedication to his achievement and uh, we salute you again lester that's it <laughs> for those about to rock we salute you that's right somehow i heard that before mm. oh. okay all right let's get so, to business here let's get to business so in case people were wondering what uh about the rmso the rocky mountain sasquatch um we have uh, noticed that one of their posts is promoting ivan marks of course, Ivan Marks was the mentor of Tom Biscardi. And uh, as you can see, they just posted verbatim with that reliable NVTV reports. You know, uh, another uh, great reliable source. So they should tell you something about these guys and and what they're all about uh, promoting, you know, junk. You know, uh, you know, and that's. Uh, in case people don't know, Ivan Marks was first exposed back in 1971 by Peter Byrne. And what he tried to do is he tried to sell some of his Bigfoot that it films to Peter Byrne. They locked it and he put him in. It was, apparently it was something to do with locked in a safe. And uh, he would give Peter the rights to the film for $25,000. Now, um, I don't know this, but uh, let's just. I just want to check on something uh, real quick. Uh, uh, 25. 25,000 back in 71. Back in 1971 today. Equivalent of about, what, 80? Okay, so... <laughs> It's about uh, $25,000 in 1971 is the equivalent to $190,000. No, oh, wow. Golly, that, that blows me away. I didn't know there was that much difference. I figured about, about four times as much. No. No, no because I think uh, those were the good old days when you, if you made $150 a week, you know, or a couple hundred dollars a week, you were doing pretty oh. good. Yeah, you got to remember too. You know, gas was thirty nine cents a gallon back then. So. <laughs> well, you could buy a car for four thousand dollars, Brandon. That's true. Yes, yes. Maybe even less. Oh yeah, yeah. That was a nickel. Everything. You know what? How come I want to know how come my father was born? Everything was a nickel. Yeah. Bread nickel. I've, I've heard. Wonder, ah, that was a nickel. You know, nineteen thirty six souvenir shovel. Oh, that was a nickel. Yeah. 
Yeah. Anyway, we could go by. The, the mom and dad would tell the story. Of, oh, we used to go by and get us a moon pie uh, and a uh, RC or a double cola or something for a nickel. Right. Oh, wow. Yep. Uh, there's Tennessee Cherokee uh, that I made a dollar ninety five an hour in 1973. <laughs> yep. That was good money then. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yep. Tim says right and had a walks to school uphill, uphill. both ways, both, both ways. ways. In bare feet, in the snow. In the snow. Uh, so, hello, Nikki. Good to see you. Nikki. Um, so, anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, when you have a channel that's promoting this kind of garbage, uh, to me, they just have no shame. No shame whatsoever. Um, I don't know if you agree with me or disagree with me, but... Well, the... Uh... Ivan Mark stuff, you know, uh, I thought was 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 cleared of being. I mean, it was considered a hoax years ago, and they've got this listed. Amazing footage has endured years of controversy. No, it well, hasn't. that was the and that was what <sighs> NVTV had written. But now I'm wondering, what's the relationship between Rocky Mountain Sasquatch and NVTV? Maybe it's are same. they one in the same? Maybe. Maybe it's a different channel. Maybe. And we, we, we've we exposed NVTV in the past here using the Mark Anders video and videos, his suits and stuff like that, and putting that out on there. And yet they're putting out all this clickbait. Well, you know, are, I, one thing, are they doing it for entertainment to just get clicks, you know? That's well, they claim to be, a, a, you know, remember back, I think it was 2018, 2019, when there was this drone video um, that was shot and it had this creature walking in it and uh, it got put out there and people were all clamoring about it. And these guys run out there and claim they found all this Bigfoot evidence. And then the next day or the next week or whatever it was, the people that shot the video showed the last part of the drone video. And that's the, the Bigfoot turning around, taking its mask off. <laughs> yeah. Right. And here's these guys. Oh, we went out there and we found all this evidence. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Good job, guys. Well, Good job. You know. you know, maybe they found some strict sticks. I don't know what, what they found, but maybe they found some stick structure. I, yeah. I don't really remember because it all happened so fast. It was like bing, bang, boom, and it was done. Yeah. Within a week, yeah. it was all over with. And uh, I think we were on one of our breaks at the time when that happened. Yeah. <clears throat> But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, so don't claim you're the Rocky Mountain Sasquatch organization and putting this up and, and just blogging away, you know, any kind of clickbait you could do. You know, at least our content, we try to be honest with it, you know. We put a lot of content out there. We're putting out shorts of clips of some of our shows with some, uh, in fact, I'm going to be doing a Kevin Harder, uh, a, a Kevin Harder one, too, as well, I'm sure. Okay because he's a professor and I want to put yeah. the academics out there and uh, we're doing Haskell Hart. I believe we have one or two more videos of Haskell Hart shorts coming up and then following that, we're going to have John Green clips. So uh, from our 2007 interview of John Green. Yeah. Those are gonna be and uh, so we're going to be doing that next. And of course, we're going to be cutting some other videos throughout the, the week as well. But a lot of Ivan Marks' videos were featured on different documentaries. And, uh, you know, in the early well, they 70s. Were, well, they were all his. They were all his. They were all Amazing Horizons. <laughs> yeah. And that was Biscardi's company. Yeah. And, uh, you know, after watching through some of those, I was like, oh, my God. You know, they, right. They couldn't even trim the, the bear's ears or whatever. Right. <laughs> Look, those ears on that. Uh, it's got a pointy head there. I mean, boy, it's, well, he's, he's Mr. The, Conehead. The, uh, the funny thing is, is I talked to Ivan Marks' grandson, Lee. Mm-hmm. And Lee said his grandfather was full of beans. Oh, yeah. Not in those term beans. Beans yeah. was meant for something else. But, uh, but yeah, uh, definitely uh, knew his grandfather was not telling being truthful. Well, you know, that's the thing that got me about this was, the you know, it's just like from that movie Coneheads, you know, with Dan Aykroyd and uh, the other guy. Uh, I can't remember who else. Uh, the the head uh, shape just don't cut. Yeah. Now, Ivan Marks was a hunter. 
and I'm sure he taxied. Uh, to me, that looks like a bunch of bearskin sewn together. Yep. And maybe a, a paper mache mask or something with the bearskin attached to the outside of it. Awesome. That's what it looks like to me. Maybe some cardboard. Wasn't a professionally bought costume like like Philip Morris says the Patterson Gimlin is. <laughs> or you know, the late Philip Morris. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm glad we don't have his carnival of bar. Oh, oh man. I, I wish we had a, a clip of that, uh, that, that recreation that did, they did, that Bob Hieronymus did in the Philip Morris suit where he looked like a fat Ewok. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is, uh, you know, obviously it, it disheartens me to see an organization or a, a group that originally came out. And you know what? They came out in like 2005. And like I said, they, oh, can we do a link exchange? Well, sure. Back then they weren't putting out this kind of stuff. Right. And uh, the funny thing is, is that I put their link up, but they never put my link up. Wow. So I took their link down. After six months, I was like, wow, they never put mine up. Yeah. Goodbye. So that shows that kind of guy. It's all about him. It's all about them. And uh, yeah. Oh, so, and apparently, you know, I, I was very mild against them for the last couple of years i really haven't said much about them but yeah. apparently i must have said something about them and their storyline probably the on ontario uh voter video that really really took them a lot right and uh turns out they blocked me from their facebook page oh well yeah. okay but but hey guess what it's not like we don't have other resources to see what they're saying <laughs> So, uh, uh, well, the boating video, though, that was kind of, you know, uh, you could see the boat wake uh, that had just had left, left the island. The island there, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I and mean, that's, that's open and shut case there. It's, that's pretty easy. Right. So, yeah. So it, it really discerns me uh, it, or concerns me, I should say, that, you know, this is just another one of those clickbait agencies uh, in, in the likes of NBTV where they're going to put these old long debunked long you know uh recirculated videos up there just because there's something to put out there you know <clears throat> and to not have some context or some analysis of it uh to me just promotes the garbage um, yeah. whereas if i had put this out there i would have had a commentary on oh. it saying well, listen you know that's what we do here is that you know but this is the least amount of effort this is this is like three minutes. Let's put it out there. Goodbye. Hello, Jeffrey. Good to see you. And hello to the tackle technician. A tactician. Tactician. Tackle tactician. Tackle tactician. Welcome. Representing. Um, I, Bill <laughs> finding the trackway is up there. Good to see you. Bill. Um, see I know you. Nikki just slid in too. But uh, anyhow, uh, so that that's really what's concerns me. And I wish, you know, people would show a little. I mean, it's okay to subscribe to them. Why not? Give them a watch. Um, you know, I, I enjoy some entertainment stuff, but uh, you know, the I like, well, I if, like if anything, it reminds me of like, oh, I remember this, and mm -hmm. you know, maybe now it gives me an idea. This week, maybe we'll do our own Ivan Marks video. Yeah, you know, thank you for the idea. Yeah. You know, thank you for the idea, RMSO. But you know what? We're going to be the ones bringing the truth to people. You can post verbatim what NVTV said, which is really kind of not right, but I think we um, need a little unless, unless of course they are NVTV. You know, but I believe NVTV is actually a Canadian uh uh channel in actuality. But um I, I don't know. Um well since Ivan Marks's footage is in the in the the news again, well not really the news, but uh, making the circuit again, I think a little clarity on that would help people understand especially new newer people that haven't maybe haven't seen well, it before it, it's kind of target funny. audience you know. it is kind of funny because in one sense they sit there and they made a snide remark about you know you're a couple of years ago kelly shaw asked asked me to do an interview with him about the uh bigfoot body of 2008 mm -hmm. right and he's trying to sling mud a little bit in his titling uh, at me trying to say I was involved with Biscardi and blah, blah, blah. But what does he do this week? He actually promoted Biscardi's mentor, Ivan Marks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? It just shows you how uh, disingenuous he is. The only reason why yeah. he put that there was, but you know what, son? 
And this message is to Kelly. You know what, son? I have the receipts to show I wasn't involved. It's not only on this channel, but it's in print too. And I have 89 pages of police document to prove where my name is not me only mentioned once in it. And that was Biscardi throwing it in there. Nobody else. Not Dyer, not Witten, not any of the crew there that picked the body up. Nothing. Biscardi basically took that edited statement from Schmalzback that Schmalzback edited and sent it to the cops. And that was going to, my statement was going to be Biscardi's statement. This is what happened. And it was edited by Java Bob. So it wasn't even really my, my statement. So 50 large, 50, 50 large. large. And we do have a 50 large episode on this channel. So you want to watch yeah. the whole thing with the receipts <clears throat> that as it turned out, nothing I did like, Oh, didn't you do the contracts? Well, as it turned out, the contracts I did were never used. It was his attorney's contracts that were used because yeah. that's the one signed by all parties. Right. right? So, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next. All right, next. next. Now, part of what we do sometimes is, uh, you know, we tend to look at things and we, we tend to look at other people's analysis and go, whoa, time out. This is not correct. Now, do we do this maliciously? No, never. No. Right? Um, and you know what? As much as the, the previous group we talked about, uh, as much disdain I have for their their stuff, what they're putting out lately, um, I, I don't hate them. I have nothing personal against them. I just, hey, listen, you know what? I can go out and have a beer with you and talk to you about anything other than what you guys are doing and be fine with you probably. But when it comes to, you know, uh, the Bigfoot stuff, I disagree with you. And that's fine. Um, well, of course, this is Thinker Thunker, and that's an actual screen cap of Thinker Thunker talking on a video. So we, that, that's who Thinker Thunker is. His real name is Jed White. Um, but uh, talk about taking, breaking down videos personally. Uh, you know, uh, we uh, this centered around that stupid Bigfoot head that was in a museum, that, that whole thing. Oh, yeah. And when we, you know, we said, hey, Thinker Thunker is saying this thing is, you know, not correct, wrong. Or say, Thinker Thunker is saying, hey, this thing is the real deal or real. whatever. We're like, no, it, it's not. And you can actually see that when it's compared to an actual human, it's about the same size as a human head. Right. That's another big issue with that whole thing. No, no, can we, we can out? take this. We can take this stick, Steve, and we can. Right. You know, now, see, I'm a Bigfoot. See? <laughs> um. So now, what we we end up doing is, is what ends up happening is rather than being a gentleman and 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 keep it Marcus of Queensbury rules. Well, I disagree with what Steve says because literally we didn't bash Thinker Thunker. We just disagreed with him. And of course, the minute we disagree with him, he comes out and sends me an email. It says, I oh, you have at least two videos, and that's defamation, and you, you know, that's against the law. What? Uh. Okay. <laughs> Reality little, little, check. A little, little uh. defensive, are you? A little yeah. defensive. Um, and then he was like, uh, and then he tries to quote me YouTube policy. And although Thinker Thunker has been active, more active on YouTube than I have. I have been on YouTube since 2006. Right? We have had a YouTube channel since YouTube started. And I'm, I keep up with YouTube's rules and I keep up with that. I am a content producer. In fact, I spend a lot of my time now learning, uh, working with YouTube creators. Right? So I understand the algorithms. I understand, uh, I understand uh, a lot of stuff about YouTube, and most importantly, I understand their guidelines and rules. So when he said this, I know he was full of beans, and he was basically being threatening. And there's no reason to be threatening. I don't threaten to destroy anybody's channel. I don't threaten to destroy anybody's life. I don't threaten to do any of that. Um, but rather we have people like Thinker Thunker who 
sees these things as an attack, but it's not. Uh, I'm disagreeing with you. And uh, in my next, I actually wrote him back basically saying exactly that, that YouTube, you know, YouTube's terms of service does not agree with what you're saying. And I said, criticism is not a violation of law. Defamation is when a lie is told. Right? And then I also made the, the point of the fact that you're a YouTube content creator. That makes you a public figure. And as a public figure, that makes you, you, your ability to claim defamation even less. Right? Yeah, well, uh, you know, if you uh, talk about right. a video and... and Analyze right. it and stuff. My intent is not to listen. No, P people need to watch those channels, mm -hmm. right? But I would hope they have the sanity to come to this channel and see the difference between them and us. Yeah, right. There's room for everybody here, even though they're pumping. Remember, th this is the channel that's going to be honest with you and unbiased with you, yeah. right? Watch what they're saying because it may give you insight. Because I'm not saying Thinker Thunker is always wrong. I'm not saying that either. That's why you should watch this channel. My goal here is not to take views and clicks away from these people. It's a kind of a nudge to say, hey, listen, we, you know, you know what? Uh, you know, we always claim, you know, why are, you know, here's my newest statement. <clears throat> People wonder why the lunatics are running the asylum. Well, it's because we're not standing up for it. When good people do nothing, that's what happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so so something's out there on garbage. That's garbage. Clearly garbage on a post. Something like this RMSO thing. Right. Well, guess what? When they post this on their RMSO Facebook, they disable commenting on it. Mm hmm. They disable you know them. why? Because somebody's going to come in there and say, hey, dude, this has already been, you know, determined to be a hoax. Why are you promoting a known hoax? Yep. Oh, yeah. The, the, uh, yeah. Kevin uh, Harder reminds us of the turkey hunter video. Absolutely. That was for turkey hunters. It was. Yeah. You well, know, you so know, some of the men I'm not saying I'm not saying abuse them, harass them or anything like that, but they post something, say, hey. This has been debunked, or this is not real, or hey, this is old hat stuff. Let them know. Tell them. This is not what uh, Bigfoot research is the future. Now we can look back and look at it in a constructive way, but just showing this video with a casual, oh, look at this amazing video, or let's break this video down like Facebook Find Bigfoot did. And that's the exact same formula Thinker Thunker is using, is with Facebook. He's nothing more. That a carbon copy of Facebook find Bigfoot, except for it's on YouTube, not Facebook. Carbon copy. We're well, going to show you why this Bigfoot's real and come up with a thousand excuses and measurements and stuff like that when they're obviously not. And, you know, obviously there's flaws with it. Yeah, the measurements are done uh, without a frame of reference. And uh, that's what gets me the, the special, especially the sticks. Okay. You know, yeah. He's going to yeah. take these sticks and put them on this picture. Then move them over to the next picture. Well, we don't we don't know that that next picture was the same distance from the camera as the first one was. <laughs> well, that's yeah, you know, that's why when I took the Ontario boat video, right, we put in a sliding scale. If this is a six foot creature, this is a seven foot creature. If this is an eight foot creature, if this is a nine foot creature, and we use that size stick yeah. to measure right. everything else around yeah. it. And those were estimates, so it gave us a sliding right. rule. If it right. was this, we're right. not saying it is, but that would mean the strides would be ridiculously small, wouldn't they? That's that was a big thing, and then we now we can take that and use that to measure the distance between here and there. If it's nine feet tall, then the, the space here is this. If it's eight feet tall, then it's this. So we have a sliding scale on all the uh, all the measurements. Yeah. I can play that game too, but I can do it more accurately. Uh, yeah. when, you, when you deal with somebody like me, you know, you give like, I hate to go back to it. The, the, uh, you know, uh, one person for every 0 0.09 acres in LBL, when your, your figure is based on total, total visitors for the year, rather than average visitors per day. 
right. which is what it should be, yeah. then I know you're wrong and you're acting like Thinker Thunker. And sometimes Thinker Thunker acts like that. So we all need to, to well, evaluate you know, what's being said and then hit me up and say, what do you think? I think sometimes people just put their zeal uh, ahead of their abilities. You know, I think, you know, they, they want Cogn to prove- uh, the, the, the term is, uh, part of that term is called cognitive dissonance. I'm trying to be polite. Steve. Well, <laughs> uh, it's called, it's called cognitive dissonance. And one of the uh, signals, so- symptoms of cognitive dis- dissonance is illusionary superiority. Right. They feel that they, because they have a skill in this, they are apt and able to do this. Right. right? But we know from uh, scales, especially from photographs and videos, uh, if you got a video of Bigfoot standing next to a tree, right, and then you can go back and the next day and do a follow-up and measure that tree and say, okay, right. this tree is six feet tall. We know. Now, if the creature was standing, you know, level with the tree, well, we got a, a pretty good indication that creature was six feet tall. Right. And uh, But if you don't know, you know, you can't guesstimate, oh, well, that looks like that tree is eight feet tall. Well, you, know, you don't know that. <laughs> it's uh, impossible to know right. without the, right. without the right. facts. Right. Well, right. I mean, uh, you know, with, as somebody that has worked in professional investigation all his life, <clears throat> I find it really difficult at times to look at something like that and watch the people make assumptions about something right. like thinker. Th- one of thinker thunkers thing in that boat video was assuming that the tree was this tall. Right. Yeah. How can you do that without seeing the tree? Okay. Yeah. Right from there, any, for a- any, anything either scientific or even court, if it was part of the justice system, it would be thrown out right. because you're making an assumption based on somebody else's evaluation. Yeah, you actually got to go there and do the measurement. Right. You got to get boots on the ground to do a proper breakdown forensically. That was done with the Patterson-Gimlin film. That was done with the Freeman film. That was done with the the, uh, Pridgen video. That was done with a lot, everything that I do, that was done with the Vermont trail cam photo, right? That was, uh, so anything that I generally come out, I'm boots on the ground and Hopefully this week I will have my wrap up on the New Hampshire videos that came out a couple of weeks ago uh, over on the BFRO uh, membership page. I am doing a report on that because I went out to New Hampshire a couple of weeks ago before the tractor trailer hit me, met with a guy, um, did some filming out there and we will get into, uh, into that. Um, hopefully this week or the week after, Good. but, um, but you got to get boots on the ground to there. So this kind of minutia, um, if you look, when I evaluate something, it's stuff that we can evaluate remotely. Like if you ever notice that we never talk about too much about the film necessarily, we're not there. We can talk about the behaviors in the film, but we won't talk about sizes and stuff like that unless it's clearly evident, right? Unless there's something we can scale it to. There's a fence, there's a house, there's, you know, something in there we can actually scale it to because you know what we we know the common we know the common height of a doorway we know the common height of a window we know the common height of a, a particular fence that we can work with but when something's willy nilly out in the forest it can be anything so all right on to the next of course i understand <laughs> uh Oh no. So anyway, I'm going to get off this slide real quick. Yeah. I'm going to leave it too much, but I want people to take it in for a second. Let Ralph beat this, the massacre theory. Now we've talked about this quite a bit. And apparently uh, this is only my understanding, but I've been hearing that, that MK threatened Bob Gimlin. I don't think he really threatened Bob Gimlin directly. Um, What was said, I think may have been, irresponsible but not intentional i think uh he said it and the way he said it was um you know he just stuff off the head and it came out wrong perhaps i i, I heard the video uh i watched part of the video uh, well go ahead chris tell me what he said because i i well, had trouble 
he he ended up uh, after he put it up. He immediately took it down, or within you know uh, a brief amount of time of it being up, he pulled it. Good, good. And other people had already uh, downloaded it because gotcha. they figured uh, gotcha. they figured well, yeah, this, he's probably going to pull this. So I, I, he did yeah. make some remarks about uh, about Bob. If he goes there, he should be afraid of what Patty's. Oh, yes, 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 about what the Bigfoot would do to him and stuff like that. And I see, that's why I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a direct threat. No, no. I don't think that's a direct threat. I, I think, you know, and if he pulled it down, then I think he realized that he probably said something wrong. So I'll give him credit for taking that down. Sure. Yeah. You know, oops, I said something that maybe I shouldn't have. Yeah. Um, it wasn't although, that, although sometimes if he gets a lot of criticism, you know, I, I don't know if he takes. Um, well, the, what, what I felt about it, I didn't feel like he was directly threatening uh, Bob, uh, to, you know, or anything like that. But uh, in, a, in a roundabout way, he was kind of kind of wishing harm on Bob, an indirect threat, you know, of somebody else doing harm to Bob. Right. Which well, you know, well, well here, here's the thing, and here's my thing. Do you really think after all these years, a Bigfoot would remember a particular person if they hadn't seen him since 1967? That's it. number one. Number two, if that was true, what he was saying, the way the Bigfoot think, wouldn't that make any human being going down there dangerous? Yes, it would. Yeah. And there's MK going down to that area and not being harassed or harangued by a Sasquatch. Yeah, there's and- the... There is the the Bluff Creek project going down there for years without being well, harassed or harangued by a Sasquatch. Yeah, and, and think see how it, this way. See how if the Sasquatch had could recognize that it was Bob Gimlin, and they would say, "Hey, that's that guy that massacred a bunch of us the last time we was here. Let's get the heck out of here, man!" Come on. Yeah, you know, that's the oh, he's the massacre dude, right? Yeah, they would have no idea, especially oh, since no. Bob looks a lot different than he did, you know, back in 67 oh, to now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And for God's sakes, Bob Gimlin is, what, 90-something years old now? Yeah, well, I'm not certain. I know he is, uh, his age is, is reaching some pretty pretty big numbers. Yeah, man, and we hope he, and we hope hope he, he is has doing a lot, well. A lot more, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah, um, Bob looked kind of like a hippie there uh, back in them days. He uh, had the long yeah. hair and everything going yeah. on. But my God, I mean, I I don't know where uh, these people fantasize over so much. Don't you understand people that that want to comply with that? And thank you, Jay. Jay, thank you so much. Appreciate you. <laughs> don't you guys are great. Don't people understand that? That you know, when they hear somebody say, well, uh, you know, Bob Gimlin doesn't want to go out there. He better not go out there because those Sasquatch will remember him. What kind of fantasy land is this person living in? Oh, man. Right? I mean, if oh, the Sasquatch no. was was a day old, it would be in its, what, 50s by now, wouldn't it not? Yeah. yeah. Right? No sense whatsoever. If they live that long, we don't know the average lifespan of a Sasquatch. Right. But I'm certainly, if they're like any other primates, they're going to live between 50 and 70 years. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we were talking about that uh, the other day. But right. uh, I was talking about the young one. You said, well, it's probably six feet tall now. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, we were talking about the Pigeon video. Uh, yeah, yeah. The young, yeah. Or the one I saw. Yeah, the one I saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, that sucker's probably eight foot tall by now. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, um, you know, think of the, the, this, this is their frame. Yeah. And, and you're right. Actually, absolutely. Hello, Michael. Good to see you, Michael. Our good friend, Mike Waldy out there from Texas, Bigfoot Rangers. There's a lot in fantasy in this fantasy land. Unfortunately. Yeah, there is. Um, we had talked this past Sunday with, uh, Darren Lee and we had mentioned the fact of, you know, the, the Mike sells videos and stuff like this. So, well, I think the guy did marvelous work at restoring some of the aspects of the Patterson Gimlin film. And, and, and sure. you know, yeah. Uh, and then Bill Munns, Bill Munns' uh, uh, wow. add ons were great. Yeah. I, I think Gatewood stuff is, is just uh, garbage. 
It's uh, done with AI. MK tries to deny it was done with AI. Gatewood tries to deny it was AI, but it was AI. So, yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we even asked AI, was it AI? And it said it was AI. We explained, we put his process in. Uh, there is a program called Claude. Now, Claude, you can take any scientific document or any document of findings and put them up there, and you can ask Claude questions about this. So what we did, I did was I put Todd Gatewood's statement about the processes of how he did this, uploaded it to Claude and said, hey, was this done with AI? And Claude said, well, technically it was done with AI because of A, B, C, and D, and E. And if you change that algorithm, it will change how the picture comes out. So it's an AI, a form of AI. So, sorry. Ristol, Ristol, thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Ristol. Uh, we do too. <laughs> we stand with Bob. I stand with Bob. Ristol. That's right. Um, you know, uh, and uh, and uh, and then you know, then there's could the be, uh, could it be uh, could it be that he's seeking attention for relevance because he maybe feels like he's kind of out of the spotlight maybe coming up with some of these bizarre things no i i i do not i i do not i don't think uh uh mk you know a lot of people say oh relevance relevance no i think that it's just how mk's mind works i think that you know i think it has something and maybe it's an obsession with him uh, as far as the Patterson Gimlin film is concerned, right. yeah. Because let's face it, um, how much can you keep? I mean, I mean, how much could you keep talking about it, and then you start looking at things too much, and then you start reading. In other words, if you're obsessed with something, you could start reading into things that aren't there, right. and that's what I think the massacre theory was. Yeah. Is that you know, uh, a lot of it. And uh, it was just a rabbit hole he went down. Um, you know, I could take probably any old film I had a red filter and find a puddle of red blood in it if there's a, a waterway there or there's water on the ground. I'm sure we could say that's blood, but we <laughs> obviously know it's not because we actually see some high def pictures of that puddle and you can see the rocks in the bottom of the, the that waterbed. And yes, uh, so that means turn, it was clear water. It was not. Uh, but if you turn the saturation level up just the right amount, you can make blood there, Steve. That's right. But even Ooh. through that alleged blood, you can see the rocks in the bottom, which means it's not blood. Because yes. blood is viscous, especially when it starts to coagulate and it becomes almost a, it becomes a solid. If we change it around and make that screen, that, that blood purple, we could argue for the Smurf massacre. The Great Smurf Massacre. Right, well, maybe let's get the blue filter. Yep, get the blue filters. That's right. <clears throat> well, that's an interesting question. Do Smurfs have blue blood or red blood? Ah, see. <laughs> asking the tough questions here on the Bigfoot News. <laughs> I vote they have neither. <laughs> oh, and there's a big Keurig debate going on in the chat room. I'll oh. tell you what, I love my Keurig, and I'll tell you what. Um, oh. oh, that's one of those little coffee uh, pod maker things, right? right? Like, like I love coffee. I love my Keurig because, mm. uh, and and you know what? I don't, I don't, why thank you. <laughs> Mike said I stand with Bob as well. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, Mike. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Um, I love my Keurig, plain and simple, and I don't get the super expensive coffee. I actually get the great value French roast. It's very good, and I get for like 28 bucks, I get 100 pods. So I get 100 cups of coffee for, so basically I'm pay, paying like 28 cents, 30 cents for a cup, a cup of coffee. Of coffee. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I don't drink coffee, so it, yeah. I really, I couldn't tell you. And, whether and you know what? Really yeah, yeah. if I'm serving a lot, I'll pull a coffee pot out. If I have a bunch of people, I'll pull a coffee yeah. pot out and brew a bunch. And uh, that's good too, but I'm, you know, it's all good. All any coffee is good coffee. I, I love the smell. It's, it's, you know, I, I don't want to mention the brand, but we have a normally a name brand in our household. And about a year ago, uh, sometime it stopped giving that beautiful aroma of when you're making fresh coffee. It's like, are you making coffee? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> tackle. tackle tactician. Tackle tactician. For our audio listeners out there, tackle tactician just posted, uh, I stand with Mr. Coffee. <laughs> well done. Well, oh, yes. Very good. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Mike Waldy, uh, Texas Bigfoot Ranger, says sprinkle Folgers crystals on vanilla ice cream. Ooh. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if I would do that or not, but. Uh, Ooh, or, or put it on chocolate ice cream, too. Ooh. Chocolate. Yeah. Milk. There is this little candy. It's called Werther's. And yep. uh, they've, they've got a coffee flavored. It's a hard candy. They've got a coffee flavored one. Now, that's the only coffee that I like because it tastes like it's got, like, you know. Now, you see, you have to be sugar. careful about saying the candy Werther's. And the reason why is, is, you know, all the Gen Zers and, uh, and millennials will tell you that's old people candy. <laughs> well, and you know what? I think, candy. I think about it and yes, it was my grandmother way back yeah. when she was alive had Werther's candies. Yeah. So good stuff. They're not, they don't sponsor the channel or anything, but, uh, you know, Hey, we wouldn't turn down a, a case or a bag or whatever they want to send it. But uh, yeah, that's the only coffee that I could really stand. That's that coffee flavored Werther's. Because it to me, so, it doesn't taste like coffee. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! So Grasshopper said, "Glad I could influence the topics in tonight's show." <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Jen. Jen, hello, Jen. Good to see you. And she said, "Grass is a trendsetter." Yeah. Amen, brother. Gen X knows. Amen, brother. Uh, Gen X. So uh, if anybody ever catches the Shadows uh, Facebook channel, he does these Facebook shorts videos. And he's getting very popular as well doing them. Um, and he talks about what it's like to be Gen X. That's the main theme of his, his uh, channel right, right. or his videos. And um, he said something about you know, well, when you got to go pee, he goes, hey, when you're a Gen Xer now, you got to go pee. It's one of two extremes. Either you don't or you really got to go. <laughs> that brought me to my floor. Uh, that brought me to the floor. Well, you know, I, I can't help. Of course, you know, I, I, I use YouTube a lot. and I'm watching a lot of videos, especially a lot of the engine stuff. I love, you know, watch these other guys' channels too. And uh, a lot, I, I see a lot of these videos from uh, talking about toys from the 1960s and 70s and how dangerous they were. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, you know, I can remember that. You know, I'm, we I'm survived. Gonna, yeah, we I'm, survived. We survived lead chip paints. That's right. We survived asbestos in the ceiling. Yeah. Well, we survived. Us. Yeah, most of us. <laughs> we survived dangerous toys. Most of all, we survived lawn darts. Yeah, I loved lawn darts. That was great, man. I mean, I didn't like playing the game. I just like throwing them. You know, you can... <laughs> anyway, we're getting a way off topic now, so oh, let's yeah. get back. Um, back, to, back to Bigfoot. Okay. Oh, yeah, no seat belts, too. Yep, no seat belts. Yeah, yeah. Who needs seat belts? <clears throat> so, anyway. um, Back then. Yes, they are. Um, Getting back yeah. to our saying. Where yes, were we? you stand with Bob. Yes that uh <clears throat> you know my thing is man, when i saw my juvenile it booked off it was in the process of booking off because of herbie getting out of the tent yeah. right what does patty do patty just merely walks away right why didn't she run if you're, somebody's taking shots at her yeah why didn't she run well, it, the, the, the trackway measurements are to be believed. Uh, we don't know because we weren't there, but uh, she did start picking up the pace a little bit on out after she got through the wooded area. The, the, the tracks supposedly stretched out to around 60, 65 inches between the, the heel to toe uh, the, the width, uh, excuse me, the step, step. So, uh, she did stretch her pace out a little bit. So. Yeah, I mean, she walked away with a, a brisk pace. Yeah, right. oh my goodness, I'm getting out of here. But if you're getting shots at it, now you're in survival mode, you're going to book it. Yeah. yeah. You're going to book it. So, I, you know, eh, you know the, the reaction of the unsub being Patty in the film is not consistent with being shot at. 
Right. Right. And that's something he's missing. He's not thinking of the psychology of what's going on, even with an animal. You start shooting at an animal, it's taking off. Yeah. Right? Especially if you wing it, right? Yeah. Which MK is claiming Patty was shot in the leg. Right? Uh, MK is trying to claim that herniated bulge in its quad was actually a gunshot. Going the wrong actually, way. <laughs> yeah. Right? So... Yeah, absolutely not. Anyway, our final topic of the night is, uh, I guess, and we're just about towards the end, which is perfect timing, but I know Matt Larson from Central Florida Bigfoot, along with Ryan and Chewy, go hiking. Uh, 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 Tactical Bigfoot Research. Uh, Eric Swanson, who was on the show before with Matt. Um and a bunch of others. I'm not sure who else was there from our group. I'm not sure uh, off the top of my head. There was so many people that went down to this. As you can see, they did finally the final expedition into what Matt calls the corridor. And uh, what we're doing is hoping to get uh, these guys on, Brian and Ch Brian especially. Maybe we'll see an appearance at Chewy. We'd like to get them on the show at some point in time with Mike Ann and 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 Eric and uh, Brian. Uh, yeah, Matt. And uh, get them on and and talk about that. And we're looking probably to do that. right now we're booked through April fifteenth. So and Alex Petikoff was there as well too. Um, so in fact, when I when I met him up at the New Hampshire investigation, he was getting ready to go to go. So uh, <laughs> hey, Carrie said MK is about one day away from claiming his kidney stone was the asteroid to kill the dinosaurs. <laughs> Bravo, bravo. Oh, that's good. that's good. Bravo. Very rich. Yeah. Yep. And uh hopefully, Jay, uh, you are um hopefully you're subscribed to the channel. We love it. We love your sense of humor there. Stick I appreciate around. Appreciate you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm hoping to get those on. And of course, big news too, which I've kind of uh uh big news I would yeah, Kate would be defending them. Yeah, he'll he'll get he'll he'll actually get that kidney stone, and he will run it through AI to enhance that kidney stone to show how it exactly killed the dinosaurs. Yes, right. Um, <clears throat> but that's the stuff we deal with in the Bigfoot community. We're actually committed to dealing with real stuff, not this nonsensical fantasy land stuff. So, yeah. Uh, um, but, Hopper, uh, is that Matt standing up there talking? Yeah, that, that's Matt over there. You yeah, it sure him. is. Um, that's right. Uh, make sure Jay says, make sure you hit that like button on the way out. Appreciate tonight. You. Um, and we appreciate everybody being here. We appreciate all he is. Yeah. Uh, I do not know, uh, Mike, I don't know where Carrie Arnold was from. To tell you the truth. Uh, I thought, was he from Alabama? I'm not sure. But anyway, um, mm. Uh, a little bit of news I did not tell you, Chris. Yeah, wait on me, man. But the book is finished. Well, good. Congratulations. The book is finished, and right now it's being reviewed by somebody. I'm not saying who or whom. Okay. And um, hopefully I'll get some input on that. And um, it's, it'll, it'll be out for publication in May at the latest, so... Maybe sooner, but in May. The Psychology of Bigfoot. That's book number four on my list here. And it runs the about, old reading glasses. <laughs> it runs, it runs about 175 pages. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's growing. <laughs> so, um, you know, I didn't want to put any more fluff or, you know, or try to add stuff in there that wasn't pertinent to the yeah. topic at hand necessarily. Do I do cover a couple of topics kind of off psychology? But it has direct relation to do with psychology of it. The psychology. Well, maybe of it maybe we can do like a a, a one hour show or, or something like that on the book when it when it comes out. Certainly can. Certainly would be can. good. I would like to read through it and ask you a few questions. Kind of like you know what? I will send you a copy today. Good I'll throw that right in, in my email to you, Chris. I'll send you the PDF. All right. Okay. Thank you. And um, I'll. Uh, I'll put the old uh, media hat on there and uh, come up with some questions for Mr. Coles. 
<laughs> and you can take that PDF and put it into Claude and have AI, have AI review. Claude is awesome, though, because uh, Claude, I can take like I can take any scientific document up there and put it into Claude and say, hey, break this document down for me in, in 10 bullet points. What does it mean? Boom, 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 boom. So I get the cliff notes on any scientific document. Uh, uh, tag uh, I'm sorry. I, I opted not for the coloring book option uh, tackle, but uh, it does have some, some pictures in there and some pertinent mm. pictures in there and a few diagrams. Yeah. I, I've got to see uh, some of the rough draft there and he's got some nice photos. It's uh Oh, that, that was Mike Ann talking, by the way. Uh, yes, Mike, Mike Ann. Oh, for those, what? Yeah, that, that's yeah, apparently. That's, that's what I'm being told. I don't know. But uh, anyway, if that is Mike Ann talking, he's probably talking about making cookies in the field for our members in the, uh, for those who are members, who will get the joke on that one. First, you have to take the bag and you have to open it up slowly and then break the, the heat pack in it and then seal it back up. And then this cookie smell will waft all over the camp. <laughs> no, that's not Mike. I don't think that's Mike. No, that's not Mike speaking. Um, let me get rid of these uh, old man glasses. <laughs> <here>. Sorry. <laughs> well, anyway, folks, uh, that is the Bigfoot news for tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, Chris, do your thing, man. We're just yeah, not out of here. Uh, well, again, I want to thank everybody for joining us over in the chat. We appreciate you guys. We know we've got the best audience in big footing. We love you. Uh, I, I just I can't tell you how honored I am to have you guys and tickled to death that you'll, you'll spend your time hanging out with us on Friday nights and Sunday nights. We appreciate you so much. If it's your first time uh, to the channel, hey, man, consider joining. Joining the channel. Uh, you know, subscribe. Uh, become a member if you see what you like. Always hit that thumbs up and, you know, share if you can. You know, if you can't, that's okay. But we appreciate you. If you can, share it out. But uh, thank you, guys. And I'm back to you, Steve. <laughs> All righty. And for those who are on the Spotify audio portions, iHeartRadio, yeah, Audible, yeah. <laughs> Amazon Music. Yeah. Um, audio I listeners. Heard. <laughs> yep, all, all all our listeners out there on in audio land, if you get the chance, come over to youtube.com forward slash at Squatch DTV or at SquatchDTV.com, which will take you right to the page and check out the video portions that you missed when you get a chance. I'm sure you'll find it funny and exciting and uh, whatever. But again, I want to thank everybody here. We do have the world's best audience. We appreciate y'all. We, we would spend our time and your money in some cases uh, on us and with us to produce this great program um, and great programming. So uh, our commitment to honesty is always there. Our commitment to the truth is always there and our commitment to you, our viewers is always there. So we appreciate y'all and uh, Hey, we'll be back at it. We'll see y'all Sunday this Sunday night, by the way, I believe we're going to have Mike Tinsley on from the New Hampshire Bigfoot research organization. So, uh, or society, I'm not going to have, I'm sorry, Mike, if I got that wrong, but they'll be on real soon. Uh, Mike will be on this Sunday night and we talk about Bigfoot in New Hampshire. So it may be, uh, I may have to get some stuff together from that New Hampshire trip a little sooner than I thought. But anyway, again, folks, we'll catch you all here Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern here for Squatsy TV Live. For now, we love you all. Good night. <laughs>